So uh, before I share my screen and get into it, hey Brian, nice to see. You. Um, hey, hello. So, um, we are going to be going over our computer vision workshop today. Uh, we, we have some pretty interesting things in store for you. Uh, if, if you're new, this is definitely a good workshop uh, for you to attend and really get the gist of. Um, now, normally, you know, we use DeepNote, yes? But let's start off prefacing that, right? Um, you, you'll see it's, it's, a bit, uh, it's, it's a bit different this time. Deep, deep note looks looks a, a little different, but um, we're using Colab. And for, for you guys who don't know, this is owned by Google. It's Google Colab. The reason we're using it is we tried, trust, <laughs> trust me, we tried with Deep Note, uh, but Deep Note did not uh, like that we were giving it so many images. In retrospect, I think David and, Mel, uh, David and I found a way, like while we were talking, waiting for the meeting. But uh, Colab was like the, the only option that we could with the large data set that we had. Um, and I will show you that data set in a second. Now, uh, let me let me share this with you guys, um, just so that you guys can be looking at it. Uh, let's change it to uh, everyone. And the link. It's just, just in case you, you know, so you guys don't have to go into your accounts. Going to chat and let me know if that works. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll, I'll keep explaining. Um, let me. Okay. Uh, now, so why are we using Colab? So, Deep Note was not uh, okay. Perfect, Lazar. DeepNote was not taking in our images. And so Colab works, um, you can upload it directly, but there's also uh, the Google Drive, right? And so we decided that probably uh, it's sort of reliable. It's just a pain to set up and put everything. But um, anyways, here we are in Colab. Um, there, there was still issues with our data because Colab, if you guys all know, um, it's a bit of a pain. Um, like if, if I'm running this and I change one character and David's going to present, he has to, it, it, it won't, we can't work at the same time or else it overrides off each other. So yeah, <laughs> but we have a lot of the, the, the code here, uh, which is really all you need. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Let me fix my little so I can see you guys. Oh, key dokey. So the data set, let's go first uh, real quick in our data set. Uh, sorry if it's bright. You see, we went from dark mode to a light mode. Um, but so we're looking at dog and cats, uh, which you know everyone loves. And our data set is really big. I mean, it's in total, it's 435 megabytes. So you can see why DeepNode did not like us today. Um, and so we have our data set. We have our test set, which is smaller than our training set. And these have a lot, a lot of images. Uh, I think I think there was 25,000 per, per thing. Um, not really sure, it doesn't, doesn't matter that much, but um, so yeah. So that's our data set. Feel free to, you know, in the future use that one. It's really good. It's just very big, which is normally good in, in AI. But so we're, we're going to uh, import all of our libraries. We have uh, a lot of Keras. We have NumPy, Matplotlib, and then OS and Sys. Um, and you will see why we use that. Don't feel too scared of this. Uh, I know it looks like a lot, but personally, I like how the color looks. I think it looks really cool. Um, but so let's get to showing some pictures and I will, um, oh, I'll just leave it like that. So, um, we're going to see what we're looking at dog edition. Uh, so we're going to get our folder, which I have you guys in the way, so I can't show you, but in our drive, um, this is my Google drive and this is what we would be working on. 
the screen instead. So you see it's kind of convoluted, but all you need to really understand is we're getting the folder going in it and we're saying, okay, let's just get um, nine images. So we're doing a for loop in nine images. The reason that I have the starting number is because uh, in the data set, and this is something you want to look out for if you're, if you're doing it, uh, in the data set, they actually, in the training, they start off, you know, like 1, 10, 100. So I just decided here it started to get becoming, you know, uh, in uh, adding an integer. Uh, so I thought that was safe. That was nice. And we can get our pictures of our dogs. Very cute. Uh, so we have like our, our subplot. Then we have, this is just so that we can get the file name um, for every single one of the pictures. Uh, then we're using inread to you know, read the image and then show the image in our plot. And personally, I like this one. Actually, I like all of them. Um, I don't know about you guys, but very cute. And then of course, we can't do dogs and then not do cats. So we're doing almost the same. Of course, changing the folder because of how the, the data set is set, uh, we have our cats inside our train set. Uh, and we're doing the same range. Uh, it's the same structure. So this stands. Uh, remember to, to change cat if you're doing this uh, so that you have, um, this is based on the structure of the data. Uh, and, and you can check that out if, if you'd like. And then we have our, our subplots with a bunch of cat images. So I think, I think that's pretty cool. And that's kind of just seeing what your data looks like uh, when you're working with images. Uh, kind of getting a feel of, okay, this is what we're going to be running in our model. Now, in terms of data working, <laughs> that is uh, as far as it will span. Uh, because sadly, I, I don't know, colon, but um, we will see. So um, the pre-processing, processing, even though we, we can't use the data, it still stands. And I'm sure that if you uh, were to run this on your own machine, feel free to do so. Um, it probably would work. So just, you'd have to download the data set and it's it's all fitting to that. You have the, the dog folder, the cat folder, we'll use that to call the function. Um, you have our photos and our labels. These are empty lists. Uh, we're just initiating them so we can use them. Then we have a, a for loop. So this is uh, just going through all, all of our files in the folder um, so that we can apply this to every single uh, in order. So then we have uh, our output and this is part of, uh, <laughs> I see you as that. Uh, this is part of our, um, what we're going to be appending to our labels um, as you see right here. And so this is just part of, the cat, there was a Kaggle challenge for um, for um, cats and dogs, and so they they just suggested that dogs be uh, zero and uh, cats be one. And this is for our classification part. You know, you get you get the whole model going through, and I will talk about this in a little bit when we have this nice picture of a CNN, um, and not not like the news station. Uh, that's a convolutional neural network. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit about what this could mean, but uh, although, you know, don't, don't feel too overwhelmed. Uh, this is just, you know, a lot, a lot of the code, but it makes sense, um, uh, you know, to be, and I'm sure if, you, if I were to ask you guys, you would be able to just, you know, tell me step by step what you would do as a human. Um, now we have our, our image, and so we're loading it. And uh, specifically, we're going for a 200 by two, uh, 200 uh, pixel size, because this is very small. So we don't have to you know, wait forever uh, if we were to train this and so on. So this is a pretty good size, but you can also change it around. Um, then we have, uh, this is, so uh, this one I forgot to mention, this is from Keras. Uh, you know, this is where we, we did up here the pre-processing, load image, image to array. And that's what we're doing, image to array. So we're taking the, it, the, the, the whole image and then turning it into an array so it's easier to um, you know, put into our model. We have a, um, 
we could just you know feed it into our model. And then we're taking uh, the, the photos, this is the empty list, and we're adding, uh, using a pen, we're adding our image and then the output, this is the label that we had, right? Um, and then I, I, I created a function so they could work easier with how our data set um, was, was going so that you can call it based on like each folder. So just calling it, calling it. And then uh, from there, you can actually take the, the, um, the list and then turn it into a NumPy array. See, so as array, that's the function that we use. Very clean, very simple. Uh, and then just for our own sake, you can uh, look at the, the size of both using dot shape. And then saving it as a dot and uh, with, you know, the, to me, the content. And, and this is normally where you would, you would save it so that you can uh, input it into your model. So uh, now, before I continue, any questions, anything that I went over too fast? If you're not sure what a CNN is, wait no more. You'll see as soon as I, I figure out if everyone's on the right page. Um, are we good? Everyone understanding? Am I explaining well? Or explaining that you don't even know what's going on? Oh, hopefully, hopefully the former, not the latter, right? <laughs> well, okay, great. I see Lazarus enthusiastic, so I'm glad. Hey, Hermes, let me ask you real quick. Um, what yeah. is the importance of, um, <clears throat> uh, th just to be sure, does this um, example have test, um, test data? So test images of cats and dogs? Yes, we, we do. We do. And what is the importance of that? So you, you want to have um, uh, our, our training set. Here, I'm just opening so you can see. See, you have our test data and your training set. So test data, like I mentioned before, test data is normally smaller than your training. And it's important that these are completely separate data sets um, because you don't want to be, you don't want to be training on a, on a set of images. Then you want to see how your model is doing. So you're going to test it on that same exact set. It's just going to overfit it, which, um, you know, I, I know you know Danny, but I'll just explain. So you're, you're making it so your data is just specific. Um, you know, it's not actually working or you don't know if it's working because you're testing it on the, the set that it knows. So it's not going to um, work as it should, as a CNN should. Um, because the only reason it's getting it right is because it knows it, you know, it's familiar with the data set. So, um, let's see, not Nadine's, Nadine's, <laughs> Clement, we are Python years here. I, 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 let, let me hear, uh, what can you do with Java and, and machine learning? Yeah, no, I, I didn't think so. No, to be okay, fair, they, <laughs> to be fair, they, they are doing a bit in Java. Hey, uh, Azar, I don't I don't want to see that. Now David's background. Now that's what we, what we like to see. Um, but yeah, that, Danny, does that answer your question or? Absolutely, Hermes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. And I, I hope that's helped somebody else. Thanks for asking that. Um, so let, let's go with what is a CNN? Because we're doing all this pre-processing, but before I can get David to explain to you in detail, we have to understand what, what it's doing. And the CNN is actually based on, um, it, it's meant to reflect your eye and how your, your brain and your eye uh, you know, visualizes things. Of course, your eye is, is very complex. It's difficult to you know, just reflect it like that. But uh, that, that's what a CNN is based on. And so what you're doing is you're taking an image. And in this case, we're, we're having some cartoon of a car, or even we can pretend that this is a real car. And we're taking some kind of feature, which in this case could be a contour or um, color. Uh, you know, there's a bunch, a bunch of features that you can extract depending on what you're trying to do. So uh, this is really what you're taking. You're taking these features, so the, these pixel values, and then trying to determine something from them. 
And don't don't worry about all this fancy terms, review and so on. Uh, we won't be getting into that today because we want to make sure that you understand the, the upper level, high level uh, definition of a CNN. Uh, and by the way, CNN again stands for convolutional neural network, and you'll realize this because there's convolutions everywhere. So you're you're doing convolutions over this um, this set, and then you're doing it again and again and again, depending on how many times you you want to do so. Um, you, you do it and don't worry about any of this. Just understand that that's what we're doing. We're going over uh, taking uh, some, some sort of feature and then taking from that and continuing and continuing. And then what we ultimately do is we flatten this, um, these features into an array. And um, from, from that, we see just like last time. And if you weren't here last time, I highly recommend it. But uh, just like last time, we have our, our um, nodes and they're connected to each one of them, right? So very simple. You just have a, a, a simple, fully connected, each node connected to to all of them. And this part is very important. You understand this? This is. I like this part because it's very visual. Um, in this case, we have you know car, truck, van, bicycle. But in our case, we would have cat and dog. So what this is called? This is called a softmax. And what we're doing here is we're ultimately getting our classification. So it, in this case, it would tell us, okay, now I'm 99% sure that it's a car. And so you, maybe that would be enough for you to determine, okay, this is classified as a car. Uh, and you can have uh, you know, as many of these nodes as, as you want, as many classes, or you could just have um, you know, two cats or dogs. And uh, with that, I'd like to bring David. Yeah, he has a surprise at the end, right? Right, David? I heard it's, it's skilled. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, if you would let me share my screen. I'm actually gonna bust it out from the start. Here it is, the Microsoft Paint. Uh, so, Unfortunately, because we couldn't pre-process the data in time, the training of the actual model, which would have taken like 30 minutes, probably probably more because it's Google Colab, we couldn't get it done. But no worries, I will show you what's going on in the model either way. So first things up, let me actually name this model. All right, so first things first, the name of it is a convolutional neural network or a CNN inside of a neural network. And it's the same type of neural network that we saw before in the AI model workshop, a feed forward uh, neural network, but this time it's a deep neural network. So I'm probably, I'm, pro I'm sure you're asking right now, what's the difference between uh, uh, a feed forward neural network and a deep uh, feed forward neural network. So let me illustrate it. So here we have a regular neural network. Oops. And this is shallow, not deep, shallow. This is the input layer. And then this could be connected to this hidden layer right here. Like so. And then an output layer. Uh, like so. Now, actually, here is a deep neural network. And 
and n for short. It's basically the same thing, but the only difference is that instead of one, only one of these, oops. All right. There's a couple. And instead of being only three, uh, they're probably about double. And it's probably it's probably gonna be a little more than this. Like that. And it's and the output is usually uh, either this or a vector. So obviously, because we all know that neural networks are basically just a bunch of matrices and all that's going on here is a bunch of matrix, mul matrix multiplication, it's gonna take a lot longer to train these type of neural networks. Uh, that's why uh, people or data scientists try to minimize the use of deep neural networks when possible. But for this one, we have to use it. So let's talk about what the CNN is doing inside of our neural network. So right now I'm gonna make a picture of a cat. Let's pretend this is a cat. Yeah, that's Yoda. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good, actually. Okay, let's pretend this is a cat. So this from our pre-processing is an array of pixels. And it's going to be a couple of numbers in an array. And it's going to have the label. It's going to be, I'm pretty sure it was one for cat, right? Uh, yeah. One. And usually this array has, is multidimensional because the, pic, the pictures have three channels. And by three channels, I mean RGB, red, blue, and green. And the multidimensional parts comes in that the array would have actually three rows. These would be the red values, these would be the green values, and these would be the blue values. And it would all be in the same list. And again, this is one. But if it was actually just uh, one channel, which is just black and white, we'd only need one of these arrays. And put one channel right here. And this is just black, black and white. Now, now that we know what our input is, what does the convolution neural network do to this picture? So basically what it does is that it gets a part, it separates the picture into different parts. And let's say this is one of the parts that's going into our convolutional neural network layer. So this is the part that's being And this all happens at the same time. This is what's going into our convolutional neural network. It's just a part of it. And what our convol uh, convolutional neural network, or CNN for short, I'm going to say that from now on. What our CNN is going to do is that it's going to recognize what the most obvious features of this part. And from here, you can probably see 
Let me actually use a different color for this. An outline of a face. You can see some whiskers and you can see part of a mouth. And the convolutional neural network uh, action or the CNN thinks, oh, look, these are lines. These are, these are specific lines that might uh, correspond to an animal. All right. And then we're going to have our next layer. this, Which is the max pooling. And this max pooling, this max pooling layer, what it's basically going to do, it's going to average the pixels down. So it's going to actually average these pixels because it needs to actually compress this entire picture into a vector of probabilities. So part of that process is averaging out the pixels uh, compressing them more and more and more until it's one one array. And it's going to go here. It's going to average out these pixels. So I'm pretty sure I saw it coming in. And let's pretend that's a lower quality picture. And another, and now the this picture, which is still an array, an array, remember, it's gonna go into another CNN. This is our low quality picture. And that's and probably now the the next CNN it's not going to focus on the lines as much, but it might since it's closer and average it probably focus on texture. So let's pretend I drew some fur on it, and it's probably going to look at oh look there's fur around here, and it's going to compress it even more. It's going to go into another max pooling. Compress it until it's down. Wow, there we use all that space. Until it's down to an array of just number values. And these number values, uh, you can think of them as how much of each feature did the CNNs find. And then we're going to flatten this into a 1D array, because this is still a 3D, remember? 1D vector. And then we're going to put this flattened 1D vector into a soft max function. Soft max dense layer. Now, what is this doing? It's basically a, well, a soft max function. You can think of it like this. You can think of the 1D vector as a line. And let's say the cat features are on this part of the line and the dog features are on this part of the line.
if you actually draw this out, it'll kind of look like this part. This part. And it, it'll kind of look like, oops, a sigmoid curve. And usually these go from one to zero. And what this is, is the probability. Probability. Of the vector being a cat or a dog. So in the end, it's going to be the alpha is going to be like 0.3% cat. This is an example. And dog, it might be 0 0.7. So the neural network will guess, oh, this is the dog. So, any questions? I'm sure there are. So Don't worry, I'll send this in the, in the Discord. What happens if you get the same percentage output for the soft max dense? Does that happen ever or can that not happen? There is usually a threshold that you can input into your model. So that, let's say you do get that, you can say, oh, make it, uh, put it, uh, give it a random one, but it's, it's pretty rare for that to happen because if you, if, especially with a model with a lot of, with a, a lot of CNNs, it's going to get a lot of features from the pictures, especially if you have a lot of data like we did, and it's probably not going to be exactly the same. The odds of that are, are really, really low. Thank you. A good question. It's pretty interesting. Yo, David, mm -hmm. um, somebody in the chat said, uh, said, can you review max pooling again? Like a quick review, just real quick, please. Okay. So let's go to the max pooling. So max pooling it comes after the CNN gets the features it wants from the picture it gets or the part of the picture it gets. And max pooling, what it's going to do, it's going to actually compress the image more. And I represented that with a lower quality uh, here. Let me just say compress. Compress because we want we want something like this, right? Which is a list of, of uh, amount of features from the from the multidimensional arrays of the picture. Or, or you can also put, let me close it. Maybe. Maybe I should have uh, put some definition as well. Get features.
and B. Average pixels. And then our softmax, our dense softmax. get probabilities. Good title. Can you ever run into an issue where if you limit the um, the types of possible outputs, like let's say dog or cat, um, would it identify something that doesn't resemble either a dog or a cat as one or the other if you were to give it um, that as an input? Since we only have two labels, zero and one. It'll only classify, uh, it'll only give a, a probability from zero to one or from zero to 100% on whether it's a dog or a cat. That makes it a CNSF procedure neural network, right? Oh, so it would give you a zero, it would give you a zero neural network, right? Huh? So, so this, when you make a neural network and you only have like two labels like we have here. It'll only you uh, only try to guess if it's one of the two labels. Okay. So it, won't, oh it won't. It won't. It won't be able to tell if it's like a giraffe, for instance. It'll, it'll, it'll say, or oh, maybe it's a dog. But it, can it say it's f like, for example, you feed a giraffe into the program, and your two labels are dog and cat. Can it say it's not associated with either one of them, or is it going to try and attribute giraffe to a cat or a dog? It's it's going to try to guess if it's a dog or a cat based on the features of the giraffe. Okay. And it'll probably because of the pattern on the skin, we'll probably guess it's a cat. To be honest. That's what I was thinking, and especially with the shape of its head. But yeah. All right. Thank you. It, there was also, I, I love that one, um, where th there's a muffin that looks like a dog <laughs> and you feed it in and it thinks it's a is dog. It, is it yeah. a muffin or a dog? But there's stairs in that room too. Exactly. And um, I, I think Diana had a question. She said, uh, when do you stop compressing? Uh, and before you answer that, David, actually, that goes into one of the questions that I was going to bring up. Oh, so you missed it so far. Along with this. Um, so one is, when do you stop compressing and can you ever compress too much? Yeah. So usually you want to get to about the same area. It, de it kind of depends on how many pixels you have because a, a very high resolution picture, you need to compress it a lot because you have a lot more pixels, but for, what we have, we only have like 200 by 200 pixels. Uh, let me do a quick calculation on that, how many pixels that is in total. That's 40,000 pixels. But for a higher resolution photo, like let's say 1080, 1080p, ten eighty p times by 1080p, that's a million, 166,400 pixels. So it definitely depends on what type of photo of size, a photo size you want. Usually when you uh, decrease the photo size, what the computer does is that it removes pixels 
from the photo as you shrink it. Does that make sense? But in our in our area right here, we're not we're not removing the pixels. We're averaging averaging them by the pixels around itself. It looks like she has a follow up question to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you choose how much to compress it by, or is it a standard? No, it's a standard. You, like I said, you want to get to the same place, which is. Uh, I'm talking about disconnected. You want to get it to about 120 for us. No, no, no. Uh, one question. Wait, wait. Are, you, are, are we? Are we like? Are we? Do we finish with that? I mean, yeah. You want to get to the same place. It's usually a, a very, uh, probably like a one-dimensional matrix, I, I believe, of features. Cool. Uh, so my question is, uh, what's the advantage of average pooling and max pooling? What? Wait, uh, what's the advantage <laughs> of average pooling and max pooling? That's an unexpected question. So the I'm pretty sure average pooling, like I said, you, you get the average of the pixels. Well, for max poolings, uh, you get the, the highest value pixels instead of, and you remove the other pictures, pixels. I don't, I don't really know exactly what it does but it's something like that is there like a do you use one over the other for certain images like it is i mean for like pictures in the dark you might benefit from using max pooling but i mean average pooling is so good though <laughs> i can also add um well like if like a, a good thing to think about is that what is kind of the purpose of pooling? And that in general is to reduce the complex. I would say it's to reduce the complexity of the computations for your matrices, right? And in machine learning, that is extremely important because um, I don't know if you guys know what, um, I don't know if you guys know big O notation, but basically matrix uh, matrices um, have big O notation of N to the third or O to the third, whatever, N to the third, which means that like a very small increase in complexity leads to like hundreds or thousands of times more computations. And that's why the, a lot of deep learning models can take hours and hours and days and weeks, depending on the complexity. So you want to reduce that as much as possible to reduce how much time it takes for your model to compete to process. Very, very good point, Daniel. Thank you. But so is the time it takes to, you know, train a model, is that really important when it comes to developing a model? Like, shouldn't you prioritize a better model versus a model that's quicker to generate? Depends on the data. Sometimes it might just take years. You don't have years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to say that, that, you know, like, like, like David said, yeah, it depends on the data, but no, no matter how, how important your problem, if, if it's like 50 years, you're not going to wait to compute that. Obviously, probably use GPUs, but um, I mean, unless you have a warehouse full of RTX 3070s, then by all means, you know, like <laughs> how go, go at it, right? Yeah. Basically, to answer your question, it depends on your constraints. Gotcha. Um, I guess uh, one, one last thing, David, then um, let, let's see. So I kind of want to get everyone's 
everyone's um, input here, right? Uh, for features, what kind of features do you think might be important to know? Like, can you guys think of any? Um, a cat or a dog? Yeah, you know, just because- hey, Can I contribute or what? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I was I was thinking that they ask you, like, and you say yes, no, maybe so. Okay, okay. But go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Anyone? Anyone would like to try? I, I'm sure there's a bunch of features on the cat you can I would talk say about. For the feathering, hmm? like the fur feathering, like the distribution between the hairs. That way, you could identify if it's a cat or a dog kind of easily. Yeah, texture of the fur. That's important. What else? What else? Anyone got any ideas? Maybe in the face? Uh, maybe uh, in the kind of near the nose? Anything? The eyes. The eyes are very distinct features. Uh, dogs usually have those round pupils, and the cats have you know, the cat's eye pupils. That's a very important feature. Anyone, yeah, anyone else? Diana said uh, the ear shape or the snout shape. Yes, yes. And then just says ratios for body. Uh, yeah, I mean, ratio of limb to body. Yeah, definitely. Uh, nobody else <laughs> we, we ran out of uh things because I, I know david got a few in his mind right what me oh uh, let's see the pattern on the fur the whisker <laughs> length uh attitude <laughs> yeah I, I mean that's not visible in a photo but definitely in real life uh what else the teeth, the mouth shape. Uh, I don't know, maybe the head shape as well. You usually the CNN see the, the outline of the head or the outline of the body and can get like the general idea of it. Presence of a leash. Presence of a leash. Uh, very, very small scenario, but I would apply that more to dogs than cats, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I think cats have like harnesses as well. Too. True. Um, they, David, I was, was going to say somebody brought up um, that they'd like to see um, they'd like to see the actual code for it. Like, could you go uh, you, to show, you show them because mine is scuffed, remember? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I could show them. Call uh, that. Hey, let me let me stop sharing for a second. I'll save this uh, picture and send it into Discord when this is done. Okay, it's all you, David. All right. So for something like this, it's pretty big. You don't want to do it over and over. So you do uh, a function to actually make these models. You got the sequential structure which is one by one, this is usually the feed forward neural network type of structure. You got your COM 2D layer, 32 um, nodes deep, uh, three by three activation, rectified linear units, kernel initializer, HE uniform. Uh, that's just a, a normalization thing. Uh, padding, same, input shape, that's it, huh? After I'm about to die, so. All right, no problem. Hey, this is gonna be uploaded to YouTube probably. Uh, you got our input shape, 200 by 200 pixels. By three, that's the three channels, the RGB. We got our max pooling, the two by two, and our dropout. I actually forgot to mention this. This is a layer used. I mean, I mentioned this in the AI model workshop last week, but a dropout layer, basically what its purpose is, is to, uh, regular or help the model generalize. So usually 
uh, models tend to overfit to the training data. But with dropout, you can uh, stop uh, correlations from happening that can lead to overfitting and help the model generalize better. And when I mean by generalizes, it can uh, work with or predict more accurately pictures it's never seen before. All right, and then we got another COM2D layer. This is part of the hidden layer. We got 64 layers deep, probably the same thing across the board. Another max pooling, another dropout, another COM2D. This is 128 layers deep. And another max pooling, another dropout. Then we got our flatten and our dense. Which is gonna, and then we're gonna have a dropout and another dance. Yeah, and uh, we 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 also have these uh, skeletons that David made, right? Uh, Again, uh, be warned: if you run this uh, Google Colab, it's gonna take a while because usually computer vision models take a while to train. So run it at your own risk. <laughs> and time. And uh, we, we also have uh, this, but uh, I, I don't think we're going to go into that, right? Nah. Are you on? Yeah? yeah, OK, cool, cool. I'm going to stop sharing um, because we're right on time. We're five minutes early. Um, we can maybe open this up if anybody has questions. If not, you know, it's going to be the end. Uh, so any questions, anybody? What were the features you guys went with um, on the cat and dog? We don't know. We don't know. The answer is we don't know. When you train a neural network, you have no idea what the features are. Well, you can because you can output the layers, the com convolutional neural networks to show their features. But when you're training it, you have no idea. It's kind, kind of, of the neural network's job to actually find them, if that makes sense. Yeah. But but sometimes that can be super complicated. Yeah. And then that's kind of, that goes into uh, a while ago about the question about uh, testing and training sets. Um, you know, it, it's, it doesn't have a conscious. It's not like us that will try to find, it's just trying to find the best weights to uh, to solve some kind of problem but to be honest it doesn't really understand the problem right yeah it's just a bunch of math yeah <laughs> and then don't don't take the magic away from it david yeah, i'm pulling out I'm, I'm pulling out the curtains it's just a bunch of math oh no i'm disappointed but no, th there's a lot of cool things that go into it. And, and that's kind of strange to think about that there's so much research going on, but you know, it, inside that complex neural network, it's really just, you know, you can't really <laughs> tell that like, hey, you're doing something wrong here, so. All right, any other questions before we uh, say our final announcements or pieces? Nothing. When will I see some Java in action? I mean, yeah. hey, actually, if you are willing to learn Hadoop, Spark ML, and probably MongoDB, you can make a big data uh, structure and we can do big data, big data ML. AK never happening, Clement. Uh, no, no, I'm kidding, but uh, Diana said, nope, thank you for the presentation. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, that, that's what we're here for. If we made you understand something, uh, I don't know about you, David, but I, I call that successful. Awesome. I would right. too, it came out really good, guys. Awesome. All right, don't forget, guys, uh, we're have, we have our Google solution challenge. If you want to see these things in practical or practical applications, definitely join a team or create your own 
and see what you can do. Yep, we're here to help. Uh, if you have any ML needs. Um, but yeah, David, anything else to add? No, I'm good. You got anything? Okay. Uh, just, you know, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of the week. We're here for you guys. If you have any questions, put them in the AI chat or uh, DM us. And um, yeah, I, I hope it helped. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.